So now we're going to look at the subscapularis and longitudinal view. Basically, we have the same arm position as for the biceps. The probe will now be transverse to the biceps and longitudinal to the subscapularis. As you can tell, we're holding the probe in a horizontal position here. And as we look at this, we're going to see our bicipital groove again and we're going to see our subscapularis tendon coming off. As you can tell, the subscapularis tendon, the fibers on top, are, these are perpendicular to our beam or parallel to our probe, so we can see them this well, but as it dives in, because of the angle, it will look anisotropic as well. As we move a little bit more medially, we still see the same image of the subscapularis tendon, but now we can also see our coracoid, and we can see our coracohumeral ligament, and if we do a dynamic view, we'll be able to see our subscapularis tendon sliding underneath the coracoid, or in this case, the tendons and ligaments coming off the coracoid. And we're looking here for, you know, uh, bunching up of the tendon itself or, or the bursa on top, and in this case, uh, it's sliding, you know, normally without any difficulties. The other reason to do this dynamic view is because the fibers that are place on top, we'll be able to see better. So that way we can look at more proximal fibers and we can eliminate the, the anisotropy in that fashion.